once you get to a certain level, it's all about building a real business. How do I hire the right salespeople? How do I hire the right employees? And for me, my vehicle, what helped me make money were mortgages, the mortgage industry, real estate. You marry the right person, become rich. Some people are, you know, trying to be influencers. Some people are better influencers. There's makeup artists that make a lot of money. So there's a lot of ways to choose a vehicle to make money. So today I'm going to go over the fundamentals and I'm going to teach you just everything from start to finish, whether you're in the beginning stage, middle stage, or in the further stage. You want to create a business that runs on autopilot where it doesn't matter where you are, your business is, is making money for you. So like no matter where I am every day, I'm getting checks. You guys see me on my Instagram, checks, 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 I, and, and I promote that. And every business is like that. When you see that, be fucking lazy. That's what I did for my businesses to start making money. But you got to pay attention to it. You, what I mean by that is you got to delegate everything. And there's two things that I focus on only, which are being a workaholic on things that I love, but most importantly, on things that are million dollar activities. Every single time that I'm doing something, I want to make sure it's a million dollar activity because I got to maximize my minutes like minutes that you can't get the minutes back. And I have this really tight process where once I'm done with my cardio, I go to my kitchen and my food is ready. It takes me two, three minutes to eat and I don't even clean up. I just leave everything there and I rush to the restroom to shower. I shower, I'm out and I'm out, I'm back to the office and I start my second day. A lot of you have seen my first day, second day, third day. So every day I get three days out of one. It starts at 4 a.m. more or less and I end it at 12. And that's when I start my second day till five or six. When I get home, that's when I start my third day, when I spend time with my daughters, spend time with Syl, especially when she wears dresses like yesterday. Sometimes they, they, they vary on, on the activities we do. The bottom part, hire positions to replace everything you do. Hiring a controller for us solved a lot of our headaches. Like everything that has to do with accounting and payables and all that, finances gets, gets handled, I don't even know. All I get is, reports. I go over the data and it helps me go, okay, well, what's going to be the next strategy? What's going to be the next innovative campaign? Where can we save? Where can we invest? And you look at the data. For us, we target millennials because 80% of our customers, 80% of the people we employ are millennials. Those are people within the age of 26 and 41. If you start a, a business and you're targeting the wrong generations, then your business is not going to do that well and that we learn the hard way. So we know that we focus on millennials because that's what's working in our industry. Your industry could be a different industry where you focus on baby boomers. So it varies. So make sure you know your niche, your niche. Rocket mortgage is number one. So what I discovered the hard way, if you want to create a business that's worth a lot of money, then it's not rocket science. We're in the industry of mortgages. You might be in the industry of something else find the number one company. I found the Goliath in mortgages. That's number one company in the, in the nation. Rocket Mortgage funds approximately 300 billion every year. They're valued at 40 billion. Figure out how many doubles are you away from creating that 300 billion funding company that's worth 40 billion. So if you're making a billion, you could do double is realistic. You go to 2 billion, 4 billion, 8 billion, 16 billion. So it takes you about eight years to start funding close to that 256 billion. So you're eight doubles away. That's realistic. That's eight years. I get the best company and I reverse engineer. I go back and, and, I, and I, I look them up today and I'm like, okay, they have a CFO, they have a CO, they have a CTO, they have a CIO, they have all these different positions precedent. You never know that in the beginning when you start a company, you pay everybody 1099, you get uh, in trouble because you're not paying people the right way and you break a lot of rules, you're not compliant and then you learn the hard way. So once you start learning, and the earlier you could learn, like the like our little girls that, that came here, the faster you can become a, a success. Think about the biggest pain you've had in business. Maybe you were about to go out of business and you and, and you fought and you didn't. Maybe a mid-level pain that you had. But when you build businesses, you know, it takes a lot of pain. And the more successful you become, it's gonna be measured by how much pain can you handle, your pain level threshold. If you can't handle a small level of pain, you're never gonna make it. Good luck with your $1 company. It takes a lot, a lot of hard moments to, to get there. I have an 80-20 rule that has worked really good for me. In the beginning, I tried pleasing everybody. So let's say I have 10 agents in the beginning and I'm giving all 10 agents the same amount of attention. I'm giving them advice coaching, tips, and then I start losing the top producers. 
Why? Because I'm giving everybody the same attention. You gotta be a little bit selfish with this because when you start giving everybody the same attention, guess what? The 20 percenters, they need more attention. These people are driving your business. They're scaling it. So I got, we got to the point where I'm like, still, I'm not gonna spend time with the 80 percenters. I'm only gonna spend time with the 20 percenters. These people are get, gonna guarantee our, that we're gonna continue to blow up. And I started paying attention to those people only. The 80 percenters, which are the people that produce very little, they're the ones that bitch and complain all the time. That's why they're closing one deal a month. They're making one sale, one sale a month or no, no sales a month, but they're complaining. They're blaming it on everybody but themselves. I don't get training. I don't get time. You gotta earn it. John Maxwell says, if you want my time, produce. So when I start focusing on the 20 percenters, guess what? I start getting more 20 percenters. Company keeps blowing up. And yes, I lose some 80 percenters. But that's okay. I don't want to lose the 20 percenters because 20 percenters contribute to 80 percent of the revenue. So I'm going to put all my money and my time on the 20 percenters. Whether you like it or not, there's a lot of other companies to go out there for the 80 percenters. We're not looking for 80 percenters. We're looking for the elite, for the one percenters, which are the 20. Without great teammates, you're not going to build a billion dollar business. If you're hiring and oh, you get all these all these uh, people that want to join and and it says unemployed, they don't have a job, skip them. The best employees, you steal them. They're employed, good employees, they're taken. It's like a, a, a wife, you know, like a, when you have a, a hot wife. Like every time you see like a, a woman or, 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 a, or a man that's, you know, handsome, hot, they're usually taken. You see a lot of, you know, people that are available, they're not the best looking people. Maybe they're not the smartest people, not, not the most successful people. You find somebody that's rich, smart, and hot, they're probably taken. Same with employees. They're taken. You know, in today's world, you gotta be cool. If you look like Jabba the Hutt, you're probably not gonna have a coolness factor. You know, like it's gonna be hard to recruit like the, the, the people that wanna be cool. Like Eli and Mike, I'm sure they don't wanna go work, be part of Jabba the Hutt, right? You, you want some cool people, right? You wanna be part of the coolness. You bring energy, you have swagger. You don't get phased. There's a lot of things that go on all the time. Like Sil tells me uh, today like five times already. I can't believe this is going on. I can't believe this. I can't believe it. What about that? What about that? I just, I just go like this. And just ignore her. Just move on. You can't get phased. Things are going to happen. When you're cool, you don't try to impress anyone. You just, you're yourself. You don't apologize for being yourself. You have fashion. You're attractive. Confident, you have fun. No, you gotta be funny. So you gotta have that coolness factor to blow up. The Kardashians are cool. They blew up. Once you get all that, this is critical to your business. Tracking, you gotta track everything. Just like personal in business, you gotta track everything. Sales revenue, website traffic, cost for loan for us, cost for loan, because the company, like when you have a lot of events, when you have uh, company trips, company expenses, a new office that, that we got. You know, Tim was talking about 5,000 and 100,000. That's the difference between the office. We went from a 5,000 a month office to a 100,000 a month office. You can't fake that. Those are costs. When you hire all these high uh, C-level executives, that's a cost. All the trips, cost. There's a lot of costs that come, not just alone not just a real estate transaction, not just an insurance transaction. There's a lot of cost for the business. I like to measure the last 12 months versus the last 24 months. What did this uh, salesperson do 12 months versus the last, the prior 12 months, last 24 months? Where do you get your business? Very important for when you're dealing with your employees, with your staff, you don't tell employees, hey, you're not fast enough. Hey, you know what, you're, you're, you're too slow. You're not getting it. When you do that, it's, it's emotional. Feelings get hurt. What I like to do is I like to track I like to track on deadlines. I'll be like, Anthony, you told me, uh, hey buddy, you said you'll have the video by, by 12.30, right? The video's not done. So the deadline was missed. I'm not gonna say, Anthony, like, no, it's gonna be just deadlines. Anthony, okay, well, give me a deadline. So what, what time can, can the video be completed, um, Anthony? He'll tell me, well, give me another 30 minutes. Okay, put the timer, 30 minutes. And like 30 minutes I go and, okay, what's, what, the video's done? Yeah, it's done, okay, cool. But it's deadlines. If you don't set deadlines with your team, they're not gonna get completed and you cannot, go to your team and be like, hey, you're too slow. Hey, you're not fast enough. Hey, you're distracted. Hey, da, da, da. deadlines. Deadlines remove all the emotion from your business. So just like I track my business, I track my personal life. I track my diet. I track everything. The dress you were wearing yesterday, I track that. Now this is what made the biggest di difference for me. 
you start a company, people are not gonna run to your company. Like who has an idea right now for a company? Who's starting the company right now? New company, fairly new. So when you start a company fairly new, it doesn't work like, oh, I start a company and then all of a sudden you have the top talent that wants to just run to your company, wants to be part of you. When I started the company, I had no idea what I was doing. And I'm like, how do I get people to join the company? I'm not saying go do this, but this is what worked for me. I know it worked for Mo too. I went out and I got my red Ferrari, pre-owned, 8,400 uh, 8, miles. In 2016, I got the, the Ferrari, but it was a 2011 uh, 458 Italia convertible. Not convertible, the, the hard top. That's why I named my daughter Italia. So I got that car so that I, can, so, so that I could sell the mortgage dream and be like, um, I got the idea from Ty Lopez. How many of you know Ty Lopez? So I saw him doing the video with this Lambo and I said, well, I'm gonna do videos with the Ferrari and I'm gonna sell the dream. If you become a mortgage person, a mortgage guy, then you're gonna become a millionaire and drive a Ferrari. A long story short, it ended up working. How do you separate yourself like, um, like Goliath? How do you beat Goliath? Goliath is way bigger than you, more resources, more money, but how do, what do I have that Goliath doesn't have? So I started doing, going over data and what do I have? Okay, I have the Latino community behind me. The biggest population right now are Latinos. Correct me if I'm wrong, Google it. Latinos are the biggest population in the nation. What else? Millennials, I'm a millennial. So I'm like, what if I go out there and promote myself of where I came from? I could, I have all the Latinos behind me. So I started doing that. And then I wanted to control the narrative. Whoever controls the mic is powerful. How do I get on stage? I begged a lot of people to be on their stage. They promised me it never happened. So I created my own stage, Driven. Then I did the Driven Bootcamp. Once purely business, once more motivational. The last one is, I'm like, wait a minute. The, this uh, successful person is, has all these celebrities and people that have a big following. So what I started doing is I started paying all of these people money in the beginning so that I can bring them to my event so that they could bring their audience and that way I could pick their audience hoping that they would like me. And it started happening. And then when I started paying these speakers to come and speak at Driven, so I'm like, okay, I'm gonna pay you for, for, to speak but can you throw in a podcast? A podcast is probably more important than bringing them to the event to speak. And what I would do is I would say, I'm gonna go to you, I'll fly to you. Why? Because that's my key to make them my friends. I got everybody's cell phone. Like I got John Maxwell's cell phone. I, I got direct connection with Tim, Grover, everybody. Why? Because I've been working on my skills, my people skills to make people like us. And you know, when you're genuine, when you're just real, you're not hiding anything, you're yourself, you make mistakes. People appreciate that. You start making all these relationships and then all of a sudden, then all these people, then you get to a point where now people want to pay you to be on your stage, a lot of money. What's going to be something different that is going to separate you from all your competitors? Circus Soleil did it. If you guys haven't read the book, Blue Ocean Strategy, it talks about the circuses used to be all the same. You get the clown pay that people come in with their kids, 20 bucks to come in and everybody's fighting for the best clowns. But then Circus Soleil said, well, why don't we make it a show where we charge not 20 bucks, but two, 200, 300 bucks, but we have drinks, we have shows, exotic animals, naked girls. And then they started selling tickets for 300. Cause you know, price is just made up. We could have charged a lot less, but we like to charge more. Like we're not, you, you don't want to build a company that's a discount company. You want to, you want to charge well, of course. You don't want to rip people off. I don't, I never want to, and I never want my people to be discount people. We are expensive. Biggest mistake I've made was hiring cheap stuff. There's a lot of people that are confused entrepreneurs, meaning they think they're entrepreneurs, but they don't understand that it's almost the same thing. Like you don't have to go through all the problems, all the stress, all the difficult times that the entrepreneur already went through. Steve Ballmer is a pr prime example. He's worth a hundred billion, almost the same as the founder. And he was the seventh highest employee. All it means is that the entrepreneur started the business with his own money, assumed all the risk and created a platform where others that are just the same as an entrepreneur can thrive. The only difference is that they don't take all the risk. They don't have to put in all the, the money to start the business, but they're all partners. They're, look at this. They're worth almost the same amount of money. You don't have to go out there and start your own thing. You could, but look at Steve Ballmer. Nothing wrong with that. I wouldn't mind being the 20th employee if I was going to be worth a hundred billion. When you're trying to become successful, people are making fun of you. Oh, he's faking it. He leases his cars. Uh, uh, he has a fake watch, whatever. But when you start making it, you know, when you really make it, then people start attacking you. Not, now all of a sudden you have more enemies. You have a lot of enemies, a lot of haters. So you gotta learn how to be, play defense. I'm pretty good at defense, see? And how are ways to become a, a, 
a great defender, I talked about hire the biggest law firm because you need protection for everything. When you make it, people want to take your money, take shortcuts, build great relationships, become an expert in your industry. You want to know your, your stuff more better than everybody. Business insurance. You know, if I would have had the right business insurance, I would have saved a lot of money. There's insurances that cover your attorney fees, strong brand, customer service, solid contracts, play defense. Because when you make it, people are going to try to take it away from you. You know, Goliath has everyone telling them he's amazing. You know, and that's one of the things that, that, that I have to deal and, and a lot of you guys have to deal with. You guys are doing good. People are going to start, oh, Mo, you're so, you're, you're so awesome. You, you make a lot of money. You have a nice car, nice watches. You're, you're, you're awesome, Mo. When people tell you that, you got you to gotta learn how to be like, okay, cool. Yeah, let me get back to work. Never let that cockiness, that ego get too high because every day, and, and some of us, most of us don't have the, that problem, but remember Goliath, he has everyone telling him he's amazing. So he's getting comfortable. He doesn't work as hard as he used to. He doesn't speak to consumers directly. You, you master three things that you're better and you attack them. Easy example. If this guy's bigger than you and he's maybe a better, stronger wrestler than you, maybe he's, he doesn't have good aiming. He's slower. So maybe you could run around and, and throw rocks at his head or get a knife and throw it behind him or kick him or whatever, but you got to beat him at, at something he's weak at. Don't try to fight a, a really good wrestler in wrestling. Maybe do the kicking game, whatever the other person's weak at. Attack him like that. You know, when you're trying to make it, you're flashy. You're showing off, which is good. I did it. You want to do it. But you know, when, you're, when you really make it, like things that me and my wife uh, appreciate now more is privacy. It's, it's ex exclusivity. We like nobody knowing where we are. We like it. Me and Syl, we appreciate those quality moments that we have with our daughters, with our parents. It's beautiful. And I talk about environment all the time. Like these courtside seats, we can't ever go back to a Laker game if we don't sit courtside. We can't. It's the relationships you make. I got Ray J's cell phone. Cell phone. I, I, I didn't know Ray J that well, but I met him. Became buds, gave me his cell phone, invited me to a party, but I just can't be in parties. It's not a good place for me to be at. Clubbing and those kind of things, especially with, with a person like Ray J. You know, he's, he likes to have fun. I'll probably get in trouble if, if, I, if I would have gone. Don't look at the price of sitting courtside. Look at the relationships you're going to create. When you're flying coach, fly first class. The person you're going to sit to be next to is going to be somebody first class, not coach. When you go on a trip, stay in the best hotel. I remember me and Sil, when we could barely afford to go to Puerto Rico, we used to stay at the Marriott, Isla Verde, I think $200 a night. And then we used to run outside and we ran, we used to run to the Ritz, I think that was next, next, next door, maybe like uh, 10 hotels to the left. And then we would go in there and we would be like, wow. Like, like, like the floors were different, like better, better marble, better stone. The bar had granite versus like a plastic fake uh, bar. It, it was just beautiful, man. And then the people there had nice watches and we just started talking to people. And, and that just opens your, your mindset, your, your imagination in the best places. You guys in the back, come talk to these people right here. These people are smart. Very few people have abilities like Jordan. I really wanted to be a basketball player. You could see it right there. I had my, my wristband. See that? I used to, I used to be pretty good at basketball, but you know, at five, nine, five, nine and a half, it's kind of hard to be, to be the best basketball player, but I was pretty good. And that guy, Jordan, he has some certain ability. So the, the difference is ability is the quality of being able to do something. Potential of a person to do something. It's natural. Like that was natural to him. He had it. He was able to do it. I wasn't the best looking guy, I wasn't the strongest guy, the fastest guy, the smartest guy. I was the most insecure person in the world. I was in ESL class. I was, um, they put me in special ed before that because they thought I was special ed, but then they figured out he's not special ed. He just doesn't understand English. So then they put me on, on, uh, on ESL class, taught me English. And then I forgot my Spanish and now I speak both of them kind of fucked up. <laughs> but I knew that if I, masked, if, if I improve my skills, I knew that I could become somebody. You know, I knew I could become somebody. And if you look at this, there's a very select few of people that are here that have the talent, but there's also a lot of people that have a lot of abilities, a lot of talent, and they never do anything with it. They go to jail, they end up being miserable, being, being broke, being dead. I knew that. And you also have a lot of people that have knowledge and are 60, but they're right here, they're broke. But I knew that if I worked on my skills, I could get close to being here. 
So I started reading a book a week. I started doing everything, but I started working on my skills. And skills are gained by and improved by observing, practice, experience, tutoring, knowledge. Skill is being able to do something well. Not as good as Jordan, but well. You learn them, you acquire them. So I just started working my ass. That's why I do five hours every day of, of self-improvement. Every day I want to do five hours. That's why I wake, I sleep three hours less than Syl every day for 365 days a year. That's a month and a half that I'm alive more than her in one year. She spends a month and a half sleeping more than I do. I choose to work on my skills. These things, I follow this everywhere I go. My core values make it very easy for me to select who I want in my life. You gotta be all in. You gotta be all in. Ethics, work ethic, attitude, integrity, loyalty, family, health, teamwork, exercise, self-improve. And these are the people that I don't tolerate in my life. I can't stand cheap asses. If you know any cheap asses, get rid of them. Quitters, get rid of them. Small thinkers, get rid of them. Lazy asses, get rid of them. Entitled people, get rid of them. Softies, I don't want to see them. Downgrading, we don't downgrade and we don't uh, allow triangulation. If you have a problem with somebody, go tell them in his face. Thank you. Gracias.